Hi there, my name is Joanne Hasty, and today I wanted to show you how I mount paintings that are on wood panel on uh, a backing so that they could be framed. This is to show you how they will be available for sale from me, or if you wanted to do it yourself, you can see how to mount them yourself. So here is one of my recent abstract paintings. I do hard edge abstract paintings, acrylic on panel, and with this project, I'm currently programming my robotic arm, my XR7, to make these paintings. Now, I picked going onto thin panel because it stays flat while the robot's painting, and also it's easier to store. So what I do for storage is I just wrap these in wax paper so nothing sticks to them, and then I can stack them. Whereas when I've worked in the past with canvas or with thicker wood, I end up having to do a lot more packaging and bubble wrap before I put them into storage. So I like the, the flexibility of these and they're a lot smaller. But one challenge is how do you now hang this panel on your wall? So I wanted to show you how I'm doing that. So for these this size, it's currently a 9 by 12 And at the art store, I just purchased birch panel. But then I can also purchase panels that have a raised edge to them. And what's nice about having this raised edge is then I can put the fasteners on the sides so now you can hang it on your wall. Also, if you really need to hang it immediately, it's not very safe, but you can also just hang it on the ridge there. So I'm just gonna pull up one of my paintings. So here is a one of the abstract paintings, another nine by 12 and I have bonded it to one of these panels. And then I take eye hooks. I can also get these at the art store. And I make sure I put them on the inside. That way they're not sticking out of the back so they'll scratch your wall. So I put them on the inside. And then I buy wire, hanging wire by the, the roll, the spool. So this is 396 feet or 120 meters of wire. And then I tie it to either side and then clip it. Make sure that you use wire clippers and not scissors because I have destroyed a pair of scissors when I couldn't find my, my wire clippers. And then I also sign and date the piece on the back and I have special stickers made as well that I put on the back. One thing that I've done differently and I did a bit of research of how I wanted to glue this piece to the backboard and I decided to use, let's see if I can find it. I know I have it here somewhere. So I decided to use silicone glue and the reason I did that after a bit of research is that the bond is less strong than the wood. If I use wood glue then the if you've ever ripped apart two pieces of wood that have been wood glued the bond stays together and now you've ripped the wood and because this is a fine art piece and if you want to say change the mounting system you can now pull this off and I did end up trying that because one of the when I am gluing I put glue down over the entire surface and then push it down and then I stack books on top and one of the paintings it actually had a bow in it the flat panel did and so I ended up pulling it off putting more glue in the middle and then using C clamps in those spots that bowed up to press it down now when you use C clamps make sure you put a cloth or something between so when I'm stacking books, I put wax paper and then the books on top. When I'm using clamps, I'll, I ended up just using some socks just to, to have something soft on this surface. You don't want to put the actual clamp in there or make any marks in the wood as well. Right now, I've been using silicone and I really like that. When I went to the, the hardware store, I thought I might have to buy one of those big caulking guns with one of these, but fortunately, they also sell them in smaller bottles. This has worked really well. And now you can hang this piece up and now if we go one step further, if you're on my Etsy site, you can buy the piece like this or one step further, let me just put this down over here. Here is another example, but this time I have it in a floater frame. Now a floater frame leaves a gap on the sides and when you frame this way, you actually mount the painting from the front and then you fasten it in the back. Let's see if I can take this off. You don't have to put the screw on the actual frame. You only have to put the screw into the painting part itself. And make sure when you're buying the frame that you check that the painting will rest inside of the frame. I'm close here because I do have a regular half inch 
raised panel plus the panel on top. So it does sit fairly flush, but it wouldn't look right if it's sitting above. But I really like what happens here and the, the look of this because the geometric abstracts are so flat, they, they don't have much depth to them. So now you add the floating frame and it gives you a little bit of thickness there and, and depth in the sides. So I really like how that highlights that piece. One thing I learned this morning as I was framing these pieces and before I started shooting this video is this raised panel had quite a thick edge here, which allowed me to put the screw over here. When I went to do the second one, so this is the second one, there was no lip inside for me to put the screw. So I actually had to take a set of vice grips and bend this joint. Let me just grab one. So these little tabs normally look like this and I would just screw it onto the painting there, but you can see the hole has nothing to screw into. So I actually had to bend these and make them L joints and then I could screw it in. So from now on, whenever I buy these backboards, I will triple check that it has a thick edge on the inside and that's for framing. So it's one of those things where you're so excited about the project and you just buy stuff from the art store not thinking of the next steps. So definitely make sure if you're going to do go this way or even if you just paint straight onto those backboards that um, they have enough lip for framing. That said, you're probably wondering why am I not painting straight onto this. Right now I'm renting a storage space to house all of the paintings that I haven't sold yet. And so that much thickness over time, if every single painting has a quarter inch versus an eighth of an inch, it adds up over time. So I wanted to just paint on these flat panels so that way they're a little bit easier to store. When you do paint on straight onto these, like I did on that piece on the wall, you now have to protect all this edge because, because it's now part of the painting. Whereas now with this, when it's just on a thin piece like this, I now only have to protect this much. It just makes it easier to store, it makes it easier to protect, and, uh, and go from there. What else can I tell you about the mounting? So when you go onto my Etsy site, this latest project that I've been working on, I've now started posting them onto my Etsy site for sale. So you will have the option to buy it like this, with the hardware to hang already on it and signed and dated on the back or you will have the option at an extra cost to buy it like this with the frame and then the hardware on the back. So hopefully those two options will work with your interior design. And if you were interested in doing this yourself to frame some of your pieces, hopefully that gives you some tips as well. I think that's all I need to say about this, but thanks so much for watching. If you found this useful, please hit the, the like button. And if you wanna follow along with this project, in this project, I am painting geometric abstracts by hand and then also using the robotic arms. So over time, as the project progresses, the paintings get more complex and the code that I'm using is just more fine-tuned. So each week I talk about the code that I'm using and hopefully it is interesting. So hit subscribe if you want to follow that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.